Good morning, brothers and sisters. We walking across the bridge, the same bridge that our beloved ancestor, Dr. King, has crossed. This is the Selma, the, the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama, and it is historical. You know, I'm going to come back on and talk to you guys about this town, Selma, Alabama, because Selma, Alabama is um, very interesting. It's very sad to see this town. It's very disappointing to see how this town is. The politics of the town is, is made on purpose to destroy us, to keep us in a given position until they're ready to take over it, obviously. And you know, we're gonna have to talk about that a little bit later. So I'm here with some of my classmates as we walk across this historic bridge. And um, let, me, let me give you guys some love. How y'all doing? It's the bridge, you see? Whoop, whoop, it's the bridge. Selma, Selma, Alabama. Here we are, here we are. I wanna bring you guys through here because what goes on in this town, I'm telling you guys, I'm just, I'm not gonna have the conversation right now because I wanna remain with good vibes, good spirit right now. But can I tell you when I say I'm angry? I'm angry. Can I tell you when I say I'm hurt? I'm hurt, I'm saddened. I'm disappointed. This town, what did they say, Troy? 80% black? Yep, this town is 80% black. Do you hear me? 80% black. And the poverty is out of control. Do you know the average income, Troy, is $16,000? $16,000 a year is the average income the only thing popping the only thing popping in selma alabama is walmart walmart do you hear me and if you already i mean we're going to talk about this all later i'm not going to go into walmart and what walmart does to their employees in terms of money and yeah they raise they raise their minimum wage but they cut their hours and got rid of their staff we're going to talk about that because i'm going to tell you guys why that happened and the strategies that Walmart is using. But all of this, all of this is designed to keep us impoverished. And so, you know, you hear people talk about how they're creating jobs, how they're creating jobs for the economy. We're gonna talk about all of that because we need to, you guys know me, y'all been with me forever. What do I always say? We always have to ask one critical question. And I always say we have to ask why, why? So that's all I've been doing is asking a lot of whys. Why is this town the way it is? Why are the people suffering the way they are? Why does this town still look like a, a 1965? Why has nothing been renovated, changed, touched? Why are there no businesses in this town? Why? Why? 80% black. So we're going to talk about that later on today when I come back through. We're going to definitely get it down. I'm going to, I'm going to share everything, but I got to go. I got to finish going through my site so I can see everything in here. I'm going to be able to gather all the information I need to gather. And then I'll come back because y'all know how I do it. Summertime now. We're going across the world. We're going across the world, y'all. Summertime. You know, I always take y'all on all my trips because we're going to talk to the people. We're going to talk to the people. We're going to find out what the people say. Not what, not what the white history books say, but what the people say, right? We're gonna find out what our people are going through. We're gonna find out the politics. We're gonna find out how many of our black men are being criminalized, how many of our black men are being institutionalized, how many of our black men are being incarcerated. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about how many of our children are left without fathers. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about how many of our children are left in foster care system out of summer. We're gonna talk about it. You know I break everything down because it's about the destruction of black families. Is a destruction of black families. And I tell you guys all the time, my only goal is to save black relationships, save black marriages, save black families. That is my purpose. That is my vision. That is why I'm here on this earth for no other reason. 
I don't care about what anybody else is doing. I got my niche. I know my focus. It's black families. And until we understand that our black families are being systematically destroyed, until we understand you got to put those egos aside and put your emotions of good feeling, oh, he makes me feel good, so I like him. And when he makes you mad, you leave him. We got to put that dumb aside because it's a destruction of our black families on purpose. On purpose. And if we don't wake the hell up to what's happening, we will continue to see this and our children will see it and our children's children will see it. And it has to stop. It has to stop. So what I do, I don't do it for me. I don't care. I'm already 41. I'm going to be gone soon. I don't care. I do it for my children and my children's children. We should all do it for our children and our children's children. So we got to know the truth and we got to stop living in darkness. We got to stop closing our eyes to what's happening. We got to stop believing it happens to bad people. It happens to everybody. We got to stop thinking we got a little bit of education. It ain't going to happen to us. They probably looking to get my ass too. They just haven't found anything yet. But trust me, these are the make up something. They'll make up something. So you got to understand what's going on here. So my beloved people now, y'all know when I get angry, my mouth get dirty. Ain't no children around me, so if you got your children on later, I know y'all like to have your kids watch me, and that's great. You got to turn it off with the kids, because um, I'll try to control my mouth, but y'all know when I'm angry, yeah, the, in the intellect goes out the window. Shit, this, this town will make you angry. And I'm going to show you guys that. I'm going to be taking pictures all day and showing you guys that. So we at our next location. We walked across this whole damn bridge. We walked across this whole damn bridge. We're at the next location, so I'm gonna go so I can hear the history, so I can take the pictures, so I can look at more abandoned buildings. I mean, y'all gotta see this All these businesses are nothing open. Y'all gotta see this I can't make this stuff up. I can't make this stuff up. I wish I could, I can't. You from Texas? What up, Texas? Jersey, Jersey, what's up, Texas? All right, y'all. I'll be back. We got a historical site. Wait, let me show you this. Let me show you this. Hold on a second. Let me show you this. Hold on. Let me show you. Can y'all see that? Oh. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So beautiful. So you would think with all this beauty, you would think the town would reflect this beauty. It doesn't. You would think it. With all this beauty, you would think the town would reflect this. Yep, this is about Bloody Sunday right here. You would think that the town would be so beautiful with all this beauty. You would think. Maybe it's just me. You're here, Umar, over here, right? Atlanta airport. Talking over my camera. Watch out, brother. How beautiful. Amelia Boynton Robinson and Marie Foster is a real good book called The Black Women Behind the Civil Rights Movement. Y'all want to read it. It talks about all the black women who helped, who basically made the mark successful in the whole movement and they don't get a lot of credit. So you want to read that book. Where y'all from? Different places. Different places. Philadelphia. I'm from Philadelphia. Jersey. Where you at? Here's this lynching. The lynching in Selma. What's up, brother Christian? Right. Good morning, Mary. How you doing, beautiful? The jail in Selma was a repeated site of racial terror. Look at this right here. Look at this. So we're definitely going to talk about all of this. It says here on this rock. Let me read this to y'all guys. It says on this rock, when your children shall ask you in in time to come, saying, "What mean twelve? What these t twelve stones mean?" Then you shall tell them how you made it over. This is about Joshua 4, 21 to 22. This rock that I'm filming is the martyrs of the civil rights movement. So, Jimmy Lee Jackson. Here we got Brother brother Brian Viola, talking. Lyuzio, Reverend James, Reb, Jonathan Daniels. It's a lot of us out here, people. It's a lot of us out here. Here it says... Tomb of the unknown slave, tomb of the unknown soldier. So, tomb of the unknown slave and tomb of the unknown soldier. Excuse me. Here it goes, right here, guys. 
In honor of the 40,000 black men who died in the Civil War to end the brutal institution of slavery in the United States, unknown and unforgotten, tomb of the unknown soldier. And we're going to go on to the other one. And then I'm going to be out because it's hot. I'm sweating over here. Tomb of the unknown slave. Never forget, never again. In honor of the millions of African people that lost their lives but not their dignity during 300 years of the most inhumane and brutal slavery in human history, millions are unknown and in unmarked graves. So y'all see we got work to do. A lot of work. You see we got work to do. Ain't nothing change. Ain't nothing change. And that's why when folks tell me, you know, things are getting better. Things are changing. I ignore half of them. I ignore half of them because most of those people are untraveled. Most of the people don't sit down. They don't study their history. I study this sucker day in and day out every day. I don't skip a beat. Every day. Every day. Every day. Don't skip a beat. Every day. I know my husband's so sick and tired of all the books in my house. Every day. I don't skip a beat. You gotta study your history, to know your history, to value you, to love you, to understand you, and so that you can teach your children and your children's children. You have to do it every day. Because if not, you have somebody else's thought process, you have somebody else's culture, you have somebody else's belief system, you have somebody else's religion, you have somebody else's faith, you have somebody else's behavior. You're not in control. If you don't know, you're not in control. Love you guys. I'll speak to you soon. Be blessed.